a very good day, everyone. And here is Azines for today with me, Vanessa. The United Nations will support Timor Leste to sustainable development. United Nations Resident Coordinator in Timor Leste, Funmi Balogun, said while in Timor Leste, the UN will continue to support Timor Leste's government to accelerate the development process of the country. Ms. Balogun held a meeting with the Timorese Deputy Prime Minister and Coordinating Minister for Rural Development Issue and talked about how Timor Leste can achieve sustainable development. UN Resident um, Coordinator, and I came to visit His Excellency to pay a courtesy call on His Excellency. The, the Vice Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister, and to discuss issues of um, national development, especially rural development, and how Timor Leste can achieve the sustainable development goals in seven years, and the availability of UN and UN agencies to support the government and people of Timor Leste. United Nations presence in Timor Leste has provided assistance to the government from health sector to combat malnourished, the border management sector, and various areas. Annually, the United Nations allocates 85 million US dollars to the Timor Leste government to support the national development. Indonesia kicked off the first joint military drills by the ASEAN. Indonesia kicked off the first joint military drill by the ASEAN bloc on Batam Island amid rising maritime tension with China in the South China Sea region. This is not a combat exercise because ASEAN is more about economic issues. The training focuses more on disaster relief operation and civil aid services. The five-day ASEAN Solidarity Exercise 01 Natuna SX 01N exercise will be held at Indonesia's Natuna Island near the South China Sea. Military personnel from all ASEAN member countries, including East Timor, will participate. The non-combat drills are aimed at cooperation and strengthening strategic partnership among the member countries. Indonesian Military Chief Euro Margono told reporters at the opening ceremony. Kegiatan. All the exploration activities with the ZEE, Exclusive Economic Zone, are already regulated. One cannot enter the territory of a country on their own will. However, when it comes to the freedom of navigation activities, that is the right of every ship to cross the sea. The drills come amidst rising tension with the China after Beijing released the map in August with a 10-dash line showing that appears to be an expansion of the area it considers its territory in the South China Sea. Several ASEAN members rejected the map. China and ASEAN relations are most successful and dynamic model in Asia-Pacific cooperation. Chinese Premier Li Xian said China-ASEAN relations have become the most successful and dynamic model in regional Asia-Pacific cooperation and a clear example of how to promote the construction of a community with a shared future for all. Li made remarks at the opening ceremony of the 20th China ASEAN Expo and the 20th China ASEAN Business and Investment Summit in Nanning, the capital of South China's Guangxi Tsuan Autonomous Region. Li said the China ASEAN Expo has witnessed the continuous development of bilateral relations since its establishment 20 years ago, and the two sides are committed to strengthening themselves through unity, win win cooperation, and consideration for the world. The sound standing of China-ASEAN relations has not come easily and is the result of the joint efforts of all parties, Li stressed, noting that the core of these relations are amity, sincerity, inclusiveness and commitment to achieving mutual benefits. The Premier said these words are not just the basic orientation of China's neighborhood diplomacy, but they are also the key to creating a better future. He called for efforts to create a favorable environment conducive to development, prosperity, peace and tranquility, so that the development of one country can benefit neighboring countries and people in the region in an improved manner. Li said China is ready to expand cooperation with ASEAN in such areas as culture, tourism, training, and new to enhance the mutual understanding and friendship between their peoples, in turn deepening emotion integration. To consolidate the foundation of trust further, China will adhere to its basic state policy of opening up and strive to create a good business environment so that investors from all over the world feel at ease and comfortable. He noted that China is willing to improve more competitive and distinctive products from ASEAN countries. 
enhance regional connectivity and build more stable and unimpeded regional industrial and supply chains based on the comparative advantages. Thailand's new Prime Minister met with U.S. business leaders on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly in New York. Thailand's new Prime Minister Shreta Thavisin met with U.S. business leaders on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly in New York. A political newcomer Shreta has pledged to take a market-led approach to boost Thailand's economy. I'm delighted to meet many prominent business leaders today. Your presence here reflects the immense interest and importance that the American business community gives to Thailand. I'm here on a specific mission accompanied by Thai business people who have traveled from Thailand to meet with their American counterparts. I hope that tonight's event serves as a platform for networking and forging the new partnership that would further connect our two countries and economies. This year, as we celebrate 190th anniversary of Thai-U.S. diplomatic relations, the deep economic ties that bind us together remain robust and we will continue to thrive. I can see that Thailand and the U.S. are natural and mutually beneficial partners. Most notable are the ties among our business communities, which have gone from strength to strength. From my point of view, trade flies the flag. Shreta's government has recently approved several measures aimed at boosting the Thai economy, including a cut to the diesel tax, a visa-free entry program for Chinese tourists, and a suspension of debt payments for farmers. Japanese crown prince and crown princess visited Vietnam. <laughs> Japanese Crown Prince Akishino and Crown Princess Kiko received a welcoming ceremony in Hanoi, commencing their five-day visit to Vietnam. The royal couple and their delegation met with Vietnamese Vice President Bo Thinh An Xuan to hold talks before visiting Ho Chi Minh's stilt house and feeding fish in the nearby pond. The visit aims to boost ties and commemorate the 50-year relationship between the two nations, and it is the third visit to Vietnam by Kishino, the last two having happened in 1992 and 2012. Chinese Premier meets Indonesian Vice President to develop bilateral relations between China and Indonesia. Chinese Premier Li Xian met with Indonesia's Vice President Maruf Amin in Anning, the capital of South China's Guangxi Tsuan Autonomous Region. Noting the recent meeting between the two countries' leaders pointed out the direction for the development of bilateral relations between China and Indonesia, Li said, China is willing to implement the important consensus reached by the two heads of state, strengthen political mutual trust, firmly support each other, carry out a strategic cooperation at a higher level, and create a model of sticking together through thick and thin and going hand in hand for large developing countries. Li say China is willing to further align its development strategy with Indonesia, promote the deepening of high-quality cooperation in Belt and Road Initiative, and foster more high-standard and sustainable projects that deliver benefits to the people to bring more win-win results in cooperation. The two sides should enhance exchanges and cooperation in the fields of education, culture and tourism, youth and sports to cultivate people's friendship. Adding China is willing to strengthen multilateral cooperation with Indonesia, jointly safeguard ASEAN's unity and centrality, safeguard the correct direction of East Asian cooperation, and inject more stability and positive energy into regional and global development. For his part, Maruf Amin said Indonesia thanks China for its support to Indonesia's Red Hatting presidency of ASEAN, adding the country is willing to deepen cooperation with China in the fields of economy, trade and people-to-people -people exchanges, strengthening coordination and cooperation in regional and multilateral affairs, support each other and push to comprehensive strategic partnership between the two countries to a new level. 
Since the first China ASEAN Expo was held in 2004, the event has actively built a platform for ASEAN enterprises to enter the Chinese market. Thank you very much everyone. We'll see you all again soon with the most updated news from the ASEAN region. Enjoy your weekdays ahead and bye.